One thing I've learned is to get people a lot smarter than me to talk about things that I have no clue about. Well, Jude Wolf was so popular last week and thought that we would do something with him again. So this week we're going to talk about Honeywell pressure trolls today on The Boiling Point. Pressure controls like this are a common sight on a fire tube boiler, but oftentimes it's confusing why we have four, which one does what, uh, and having them set properly is an important part of making your boiler operate correctly. So let's take a look at these controls and examine the use, the purpose, and the proper setting for each of them. Like any important control on a boiler, water level control, pressure control, we typically have more than one instrument doing that job. That's just a backup for safety purposes. So with four controls like this, two of them are dedicated to shutting the boiler off in the case of high pressure. The first one to normally shut the boiler down on an increase of pressure is the operating control. The operating control will break open the limit circuit of the boiler and turn the burner off when pressure hits its set point. Currently this one is set for 60 PSI and we can watch as the pressure increases we can see that mercury bulb trip. Once the boiler's firing, if there's insufficient load for the boiler to stay on, that pressure will increase and it will trip and open up that circuit. Oftentimes this operating control is misunderstood because the name implies that it determines where the boiler operates at pressure-wise. But in fact, it really cuts the boiler off at a certain limit. So typically our operating pressure control should be set at what we would want to be the highest pressure that we want to see on the boiler at any time. So if we operated normally at 120 PSI, we may want to shut the boiler off at 140. Not because we're trying to hold 140, but because we want the boiler to stay on as long as possible so that if the load resumes, we don't have to go through the whole sequence of operation and start it back up. Our high steam pressure limit, or high limit, is it has the same function in that it opens the operating limit of the boiler on pressure rise, but it's also manual reset so that if our operating limit fails to function and we trip on our high limit, we get an indication because we have to go out there and reset it manually that something's wrong with our operating pressure control or that they're set too close together. So we can watch that trip. So as the pressure increases past its set point, it's going to break and that's going to shut down the boiler. Even if the pressure drops on the boiler, it's not going to reset itself. It's going to require a manual reset. Many original old controls on earlier generations of boilers will have these mercury switches. The benefit of a mercury switch is it gives you a visual indication of whether the switch is made, which is very convenient, but unfortunately they have mercury in them, which is something that they're frowning on in many uh, facilities. So the replacement for that is a micro switch style control. What we lose is an actual visual indication of its trip point, and we're going to have to rely on listening for the boiler to shut down, uh, etc., in order to set that up. So these two controls serve the purpose of starting and stopping the boiler. This one routinely, but this one only in the event that the operating limit doesn't work. The firing, the firing rate control is actually the tool we use to try to maintain the pressure on the boiler that we desire when there's a load on the boiler. It actually uses a three-wire configuration, commonly referred to as Series 90. It has a slide wire potentiometer in there, which gives information to the firing rate motor to position the burner to match the load. It has a set point, and the set point on your firing rate control is basically the point at which it will tell the burner to run at high fire. The differential on this control is referred to as additive because whatever that differential is, 5 pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds, that above the set point is where you're going to be in low fire. So 
the firing rate control, if it's not properly coordinated with the operating limit, you could have the boiler tripping on pressure before getting down to low fire. And we call that short cycling. So we always want our firing rate control set so that the burner's at its minimum input before our operating limit trips. And that's why we don't set the operating limit at where we want the, fire, the pressure to be. We set it where uh, it's at the highest we would really want to see on the system. An additional control that we often see on a boiler is a low fire hold. And the point of a low fire hold is basically to get a certain amount of pressure on the boiler before allowing the boiler to come out of the low fire position. And that's important because if we take a cold boiler and we put full fire into that unit, we're going to thermally shock it, we're going to stress the tubes and refractory. So this is sort of an insurance policy to prevent us from firing the boiler hard before we actually have steam in the boiler. So basically a summary on where these are set. Generally our, our high steam limit is going to be set below our relief valve setting on our boiler and definitely below the maximum allowable working pressure of the boiler because its job is to prevent us from putting excess pressure on the boiler. Our operating limit we're going to put at the highest pressure we would normally want to see on our system. So we may operate when we have a load at 110 to 125 PSI, something appropriate for your plant, but at some point we're going to want to turn the, the burner off. So we'll put this at the highest pressure that we, we care to see on the system. Our firing rate control is the workhorse. It's what's actually maintaining a specific pressure on the boiler at any given load. And so this is the go-to for adjusting our target pressure. If we want five more pounds on the boiler when it's running, we're going to adjust our firing rate control, and then we're going to adjust our operating control so that we don't shut down before we get to low fire on the firing rate control, because that'll be short cycling. The low fire hold on a low pressure boiler, that might be set as low as two or three pounds. On a water tube boiler, generally we don't want to come out of low fire until we've attained 100 PSI to develop proper circulation on the boiler. This is not a substitute for attending the boiler and warming it up slowly and properly. It's simply there as a safeguard in case the boiler is unattended for some reason while it's warming up. Well, we are pumped that spring is finally here and it's not so stinking cold. Lots of equipment out, getting maintenance, ready to go to the next job site. Jude Wolf is always great to have. In fact, the last video that we did, 2,000 views in just a, a week and a half or so. So make sure that you check him out on a lot of our other videos. Also on that Boiler University video right here. And make sure you check all of our social media right over here. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.